And whenever I'm dealing with someone and I say, I don't have the patience for this, I try to remember that God is long-suffering with me. And I, I try to look at men like Job who went through severe things and, and had such patience. I think about the endurance of Job. We could look and preach on that side. He certainly endured. And we could look at the discernment of Job. He made decisions even whenever the experts come along and told him different. He looked at it and he didn't let somebody else think for him. That is a good quality to have, brothers and sisters, especially in the world we live in today. Just go, go with the flow. Just ever, whatever's popular, whatever the latest poll is, that's the direction we should all be heading. No, you think for yourself. And better yet, take your Bible and let your Bible help develop your thoughts. Be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. That is a very important thing. We see that with, with Job. Certainly he had great discernment. We know that he did not question God foolishly as the book opens. And he, he doesn't question God foolishly uh, throughout much of this book. But I'm going to say this. As you study the book of Job, what you find is he did not question God foolishly. But he did question life. And there is a difference between questioning God and questioning life. There's things that happen in my life I have questions about. I, I don't understand. I don't have the answers for it. I, I don't understand why it has to be that way. But I don't have to understand it to know that God knows what he's doing. And so you can question life. And uh, I, I see that throughout scripture. Great men that question life. Uh, but they didn't question God. And so uh, you, you see Job as a man that he had things he was dealing with he, he was not sure about. He didn't know what was his next step. He didn't know what was going to happen the next day. And so he had some questions, but he didn't question God foolishly. And charge God foolishly. He, he maintained his integrity. And oh, what a blessing that is to, to have integrity and to maintain it. Look at, well, let's just begin reading verse 1. Job chapter 6, verse 1. But Job answered and said, Oh, that my grief were thoroughly weighed. And my calamity laid in the balances together. For now it would be heavier than the sands of the sea. Therefore my words are swallowed up. For the heirs of the Almighty are within me. He's talking about God now. The heirs of the Almighty are in me. The poison whereof drinketh up my spirit. The terrors of God do set themselves in array against me. There's a part of him, even though he, he's not questioning God, but what God is allowing in his life is scaring him. He said the terrors of God. There were some scary things had happened to him. And there were some scary things that was, ha was happening to him. Verse 5, Does the wild ass break when he hath grass, or loweth the ox over his father? Can that which is unsavory be eaten without salt? Or is there any taste in the white of an egg? The things that my soul refused to touch are as my sorrowful meat. Oh, that I might have my request, and that God would grant me the thing that I long for, even that it would please God to destroy me, that he would let loose his hand and cut me off. Then should I have yet had comfort. Yeah, I would harden myself in sorrow. Let him not spare, for I have not concealed the words of the Holy One. What is my strength that I should hope? And what is my end that I should prolong my life? Is my strength the strength of stones? Or is my flesh of brass? Is not my help in me and wisdom driven quiet? From me. We'll cease reading these verses, and I'm going to turn and we'll read a little further in the book of Job. But Job said, if you could weigh all the grief 
that I'm dealing with, it would be heavier than the sands of the sea. I mentioned already, man born of a woman a few days and full of trouble. Life has its moments. Life has its seasons. There's seasons. There's a time and purpose for everything under the sun. Time to be born and time to die. There's a time for grief. And he said, the grief that I have been dealing with, you imagine he lost his children. I mean, that in itself. You, you take everything else, that's more really than a man can bear. I know that God give us the grace to be able to endure and be able to go through some things that we said we could never go through. But you, you can't even imagine something like that. And then to you've lost all you can. And you've lost all, all your possessions. And, and just one thing after another, after another, after another. And then you lose your health. And then you lose the respect of the community and people start pointing fingers at you and they're uh, falsely accusing you of things. And, and so he said, the grief that I'm carrying right now, it is heavier than the sands of the sea. And, and, and what does that do to a man whenever they, you carry so much on you and, and you're going through such a trial like this? What does that do? He said, therefore my words swallowed up. He didn't know what to say. He didn't understand what, why is all this going on? And he didn't understand even how to defend himself. The accusations that were coming, the questions that were coming his way, he, he didn't know even how to answer it. He said, my words, all this, the grief is so heavy, it swallowed up all my words. I, I don't really know what to say. We might use this term, I'm speechless. I'm going through so much, I'm speechless. God's, he said, God's arrows are within me, and the poison drinketh up my spirit. This is how we would say that. What I'm going through is killing me. That's what he's saying there. It, it drinketh up my spirit. Spirit is life. It is killing me what I'm going through. And so, verse 6, this is what I'm going to try to get to and preach from just for a little bit tonight. Can that which is unsavory be eaten without salt? Or is there any taste in the white of an egg? Oh, uh, <clears throat> when the doctors come around and they tell you that you got high blood pressure, you're going to have to put in salt. You can't have any salt anymore. You're going to have to do it out. You know what most people determine at that time? Well, if I can't have salt, I'm not going to eat. <laughs> oh, it's hard to eat without salt. <coughs> I know people adjust and, and, and all of that. And boy, they invented that Mrs. Dash for a reason. That thing, you got to have something to season with. And, oh, and, and so, that, that's, he's looking <laughs> He said, can that which is unsavory be eaten? Can you eat something like salt? I guess you can, but <coughs> he, he's getting a point across. I want to try to make it here tonight. He says, any white, uh, any any taste in the white of an egg? It's funny, brother here, we was talking last night. I said two things. I can't eat. I can't eat fried eggs and I can't eat mayonnaise. Both of them, I guess, come from egg white. And I know you say, well, I like it. I like it, but I, I can't handle it uh, at all. I, I, can eat, I, I am not picky. I can eat just about anything on this earth. Uh, I've been to Africa a few times. I've eaten things I don't even know what it was. It, it just, I mean, it's not, I'm not picky. But I don't like mayonnaise and I don't like egg white. And so, so I said, well, I, I, I like it, so I don't know where he's going with it. Well, when you eat mayonnaise, they, some, they, they mix that with a lot of oil, and they put some spices in it. It's not just straight egg white. And then whenever you eat that fried egg, it at least has yolk to go along with it. 
probably some saw too, brother. He's probably got some saw on it as well. <clears throat> but he's asking the question, and uh, I, I, I looked at that and just read over it and uh, just kind of absorb it a little bit, and, and, and he's complaining, and he's, he's talking about all the trouble he's going through, and then he begins to speak about this. Is there any taste in the white of an egg? Can you eat something without salt? What Job is saying here, I believe with all my heart, this is what he's saying. Life seems meaningless at the moment. I'll use this term. Life seems numb. Life seems numb. I can use that term because I've seen people go through hard times. I've seen people go through terrible struggles. Not maybe not at the extent Job did. I've gone through some myself. There is a point that you can get to in a trial where you just become numb. Almost like you don't feel much. Almost like you, you, you really don't know which way to go. You're just there. And that's what he's saying is, look, it would, it would make me happy if God would just go ahead and take me on. That's what he said. He says, oh, that my grief were thoroughly weighed and my calamity laid in the balances together. For now, it will be heavier than the sand of the sea. Therefore, my words are swallowed up. Don't really have anything to say. Life don't really have any taste at the moment. <clears throat> Just numb. Nothing makes sense. I'd be fine if God just choose to, to destroy. He used the term destroy me. Go ahead and just destroy me. What I'm trying to get across here tonight, the birth of my heart, these are heavy, heavy heavy thoughts. It's so easy a lot of times when we're reading our Bible, we just say, well, I need, I need to read my Bible, so let me just, I'm going to pick the book of Job, let me just read through it, we'll read through it real quick, and we'll, we'll find two or three little points in it, but if you really just <laughs> dig into it and you, you absorb what he's saying here, what is he trying to tell us? And, and, and I believe he's saying some very, very heavy, he's still on heavy thoughts. He's talking about God, take my life, my, my grief is so heavy, I don't know what to do. And, and, and life is just numb, it's tasteless. Heavy statements. Just hold on to that just a minute. I want to kind of throw something else in that you be familiar with. Paul won a jailer to the Lord. Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and I shall be saved. Just before he got saved, there were circumstances in his life that were so heavy and, and it jarred him so much that the Bible said he took a knife and would have killed himself. Heavy. I'm glad, you, I'm glad you read a couple of verses later and the man is saved. Because just before he got saved, he was within a few feet of busting hell wide open. There's a lot of people dealing with life and, and, and it gets heavy. Real heavy. Now, when I look at this jailer, there's a difference on what he's lost. The next thing I see in him is that is sudden panic and erratic thinking. It, it, it's like, it's all, I don't know what to do. Let me just, just react. In my ministry, I have pastored some. One in particular, a young man. Senior year of high school, he took his life about 30 days before he graduated. He 
If he'd have just thought just a few more minutes, he'd have got past that. But something took place in the moment. And he let a few things pile up. And all of a sudden, in the moment, we talk talking about a man, his mom and dad loved him. Sisters loved him. He was a church boy. He was talking to some about being called to preach. And just erratic, spur of the moment. That's what he done. Heavy. That he, that, he was in heaviness. That's what it takes to do something like it. Very heavy. All right, let's back up and look at Job just a minute. This is not some erratic <laughs> thinking. This is not, you know, some spur of the moment idea. And, and he's not really talking about, he's not talking about suicide. He's not talking about taking his life. But he's at a point where he is thinking very heavy and God just would take me on. See, Job knows where he's going. We can read. He, he knows his Redeemer lives. He's saved. If God would take him on, he'd go on to be with him. He knew even beyond the grave, I'll be with my Redeemer. I'll be with the Lord. So let me come back to this statement. I might lie for Job at this point is numb. Very tasteless. And he has been pressed above measure. So I said, Lord, never put more on me than I can bear. That's not exactly what the scripture says. Paul made that exact statement. That he had been pressed beyond measure in so much that he despaired of life. Remember, though, Job is here for our inspiration. I didn't come to make you feel heavy. I, I didn't come to depress you or, 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 or to try to bring tears to your eyes. This is not a tear-jerking kind of thing that I'm trying to preach. But just the opposite. Sometimes we do deal with life in, in such a way that we don't have all the answers. And life is very numbing. It, it's very just almost going through the motions. It, we just kind of on autopilot, and, and, and we just hear, but we're not really here. We just, we're, we're dealing with things that's so, so heavy. And, and so sometimes in the numbness of life, we can just put things on autopilot and just go through the motions. So what, is, what does Job do about this? What do you do when life has no taste? I'm going to tell you this. We need a constant. We need a sure anchor. We need something unmovable when life is raging. We, when, when we are in the valley, we need a reason to press on forward. Look at Job 23. Anybody here got Facebook? <laughs> what a silly question. Huh? I don't know what to do with it. I tell you, I tell you. I, I know some preachers say, oh, you don't have any Facebook. And some preachers over here, they're preaching on, on Facebook. <clears throat> I like, at times, I, I tell you what, I like to get on there and listen to our preacher brother preach. You know, you, you, that's new. 20 years ago, you couldn't just jump on something and, and hear a lot of our preacher brethren preach. And so and some of that's very encouraging. And there's some people on there that's very encouraging. And sometimes you pick up news, and if you didn't have it, you wouldn't get the news. Oh, um, and then they sometimes, it's so heavy. As a matter of fact, I cut it off a few weeks ago. I said, you know, I can't, I can't even look at this anymore for a while. It's just, it's heavy. Because what I have found is it's also a way where a preacher can see just how you can almost check the pulse of the society on it. 
hang. You, you can check the pulse of your church members on it. Probably more so than we'd like sometimes. But what I have found is there's a lot of depressed people. There's a lot of people that just wonder, what's life even about? And there's a lot of God's people that somewhere along the way got their eyes off the constant. And it's on the, the, the chaos and, and the mess. And there's people so tied up in politics, they, they don't know how to live life. And there's people so caught up in a, in a culture, they don't know how to live life. God gave us the church and he gave us his word and he gave us himself. And so I, I found that so many, so many people are just caught up by like Job. I don't have any answers and yet they don't have any things really that's their constant either. So I want you to see this. Job 23 verse 1. Then Job answered and said, even today is my complaint bitter. My stroke is heavier than my groaning. So he's still not a lot changed. He's still very bitter. He still don't understand <laughs> what's going on. Look at verse 8. Behold, I go forward, but he, speaking of God, but he is not there. And backward, but I cannot perceive him. On the left hand, where he doth work, but I cannot behold him. He hideth himself on the right hand, and I cannot see him. But he knoweth the way that I take. When he hath tried me, I shall come forth like gold. My foot hath held his steps. His way have I kept and not declined. Neither have I gone back from the commandments of his lips. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than than my necessary food. I have a bitter complaint daily. I'm still dealing with what I was fussing about back in chapter 6. I'm still confused about things going on in my life. You know, someone might go to Job and say, what you need to do, Job, is you need to count your blessings. But I'm going to tell you something about that. <coughs> in the numbness of life, the blessings can seem like they have been cut off. I'm not saying they are now. And don't get me wrong. It's a blessing just to get up another day. It's a blessing to see a good cool front come through. It's a blessing to be able to walk into God's house and, and have good, you know, pews to sit on and, and air conditioning and heat and all that. It, it's, you know, a blessing to have a car to drive down here. We, we could count our blessings. But what I'm saying is whenever life is numb and you've got that bitter complaint like he's talking about, it is hard to just get your mind off of the troubles you're going through and turn it on something that, that's good. And if we're not careful, here's what we do. We make that, it's almost like the power of positive thinking. And, and we're not really trusting God. We're just trying to change our emotional situation. You gotta, whenever you're going through the numbness, whenever life is like a, the white of an egg, you gotta have more to cling to than just for trying to feel more positive. That'll wear out. It'll run its course. Sooner or later, you'll throw in the towel. You know what? I, I'm not gonna keep on just trying to think positive. Gotta be more to it than that. So well, you know, he can count his blessings. He, he does. He counts the fact he was saved. <laughs> I know my Redeemer liveth. And when the skin worms destroy my flesh, yet with these eyes I'll see God. I'll see my Lord. I'll see my Savior. Again, that is heavy thoughts. <laughs> There's not very many people planning out their funeral thinking about the skin worms eating their flesh. That's heavy thinking. Notice this. He said, I go backward, I go forward, I go left, I go right, and I cannot see God. Almost sounds discouraging, though. My goodness, Brother Brad, this is a heavy message. You're discouraging me tonight. Life becomes numb. 
when we are praying and we are seeking and we are knocking and we're still wondering why God has not opened the door. Does that make sense? Sometimes when you're praying and you're seeking, you're knocking, but you're still waiting. We start saying, well, God, you said if I knock, it'll be open. And it's not open yet. I think Martha, Mary and Martha, when they went out to find Jesus after Lazarus had died, I believe they were kind of on that same trail of thought. If you had been here, he would not die. Whenever we're dealing with the numbness of life and we're praying and we're seeking and we're asking and we're not getting the answers that we think we're supposed to get and, and, and we're still waiting for God to open the door. So he said, well, God, if you would just do something. If we're not careful, we, we'll get to that point where we question God foolishly. Job's emotion said, you are forsaken. Job's friend said, it's all because of sin. Job's wife said, honey, just tap out. But Job had a constant. Verse 10. But he knoweth the way that I take. When he tried me, I shall come forth like gold. That's his constant. I'm going to cling to this word. It's more precious. In verse 12, he goes on. It's more precious than my necessary food. God said. That's so I'm going to hold on to. Let the bottom fall out. As numb as I feel, as tasteless as life is right now, as much as I don't understand, this is the one thing I know. I know God knows what I'm doing. So I'm going to cling to his word. It's more precious than my necessary food. And I'm not going to slip. He knows where I'm at. I trust God. I trust his character. I trust his wisdom. I trust his faithfulness. I trust him fully. And so we can turn to the end and we can read where Job rejoiced. And God abundantly blessed him. And he did come forth like gold. And those friends that were pointing the finger talking about how bad of a sinner he was, Job had to pray for them. Because they were wrong. He was not wrong. They were. <clears throat> Job 13, verse 15 and 16 says this. You don't have to turn. But it says this. Though he slay me, Yet will I trust him. Oh, my head. <laughs> Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. But I will maintain my ways before him. He also shall be my salvation. For a hypocrite shall not come before him. See, even back there. Though he slay me, yet will I serve him. And he will become my salvation. I don't believe he's necessarily talking about soul salvation there. He's, it's not going to become. He, he already knows he's redeemed a living. So he's talking about God's going to save me. One way or the other, he's going to fix this. Thank God for the word. Thank God for our constant. Thank God for the church. <coughs> I know there's a lot of people quit coming to church. A lot of people don't see a need for it. A lot of people got out of church, don't, don't want to come back. I am so thankful for God's people because God established it for a purpose so that we can promote one another to love and good works. That means whenever we are dealing with the heaviness of life, we can come into this place and we got brothers and sisters in Christ that are strong in the Lord in the power of his might and they can help us. They can provoke us. They can lift us up. And you do the same for them whenever the tables are turned. <clears throat> See, the church is put here 
This church was established 1978. So was I. 1978. <coughs> God put a church here for a reason. You probably got saved here. Your family probably got saved here. Your children probably got saved here. You heard the gospel preached to you here. There's been a lot of good things here, but it's not just passing memories. It's God's church. The church was put here for a reason. If you need prayer, this church was put here to pray for you. I want to encourage you tonight. If you need prayer, come and let this church pray for you. If you're here and you're lost, we'll tell you what you're doing. You are dealing with the heaviest of the heavy of the heavy of life. It gets no heavier than being lost. That burden of being lost is, is like a crushing weight upon you. You lay your head on your pillow, guess what happens? The sorrows of hell, sorrows of death can pass. Hell gets a hold of you. You find trouble and sorrow. That's heavy. That's a heavy burden. When the Lord come along, he said, come unto me, I'll give you rest. See, when you're lost, Jesus is the constant. He's the constant of life. Whenever you look at Jesus hanging on the cross, you got before Christ, you got after Christ with time. You got one man on, on, on one side that trusts Christ and one man that decides not to. Everything centers around him. I believe this with all my heart. In Christ, we have life and we have it more abundantly. If you have a burden in your heart tonight, come let the church pray for you. If, you, if you're lost, turn and trust Jesus. Be saved. You pray for me. It's, it's one thing to stand there and preach a message and then another thing to live it. Sometimes, you know, you go through life and life can chew you up and spit you out, can it? Because as that old Joe so God, he just turned and he said, I'm going to just look to the Lord. I know his word's true. I'm going to keep on keeping on. Whatever comes my way, that's what I'm going to do. We need to do the same. If you slipped, get back up. Let God help you. Last person.